the DraftKings wide receiver analysis for week 13. I'm with Justin Elick at Big Daily 42. I'm Jason Gilbert, J. Gilbert 11. Take a look at wideouts this week on DraftKings. And um, I mean, a lot of good spots here for some guys. I mean, you're kind of fading away from, you know, names we just talked about on FanDuel. And a lot of that really that has to do with pricing. I mean, it's a little bit different here on DraftKings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's, it's hard not to talk about Antonio Brown if I'm going to write two articles, especially as cash game receivers. Um, the, the thing about him is, you know, he hasn't even really had a lot of big yardage games. Um, usually those are only the games where the Steelers have been down big and there haven't been very many of those. Um, only 100 yards in four games. Um, but over his last eight, he only had two. But, I mean, the guy's a touchdown machine. And as we saw in that Thanksgiving game, I mean, it wasn't even fair. I mean, three touchdowns. And, I mean, there was no competition on any of them. I mean, it was as soon as you saw Roethlisberger drop back I the pass. The game. I got it. It's a touchdown. Like, you know as well as the Colts fan. And, I mean, as a guy who has Antonio Brown everywhere always, I mean, everyone does. I mean, it's easy to, like, I hate the Steelers. But it's hard not to appreciate how good this guy is. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. You can argue all you want for someone else. Who was it? Max Kellerman said that um, Odell Beckham is the best receiver in the league. I mean, I already thought the guy was an idiot, but give me a break. I mean, yeah, sober up. Anyone who – yeah, seriously, anyone who doesn't think it's Antonio Brown, I mean, get a grip, grip on reality. Like, the guy is clearly the best and, you know, a must-win game. Every game's kind of a must-win for the Steelers right now. Again, a tough matchup against the Giants. I mean, win a game like this, momentum-wise, plus, you know, um, standings-wise. I mean, they're battling with the Ravens, and, like, a division is usually really good, but it's a horrible division this year. But – I mean, no one's going to want to play this team in the playoffs. I think that they'll end up take, overtaking the Ravens as much as I wish they wouldn't. I mean, and you know where the production's coming from with this team. I mean, it's it's Brown and it's Bell, and you're just trying to get too cute if you go with anybody else. I mean, obviously Roethlisberger, but it, it's easy. You play him every week. He gets you pretty much 20 points. I mean, was it eight out of 11 weeks he has at least 20 points? I mean, you just lock him in and you don't worry about it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's a guy you just you really never worry about, uh, and that's what makes him, you know, a great cash game play week in and week out. Uh, Tyree Kill, I mean, this is a guy on a PPR site has just been flat out dominant, uh, just given the fact that he's catching basically everything in twenty three catches over his last three games. I mean, he's been, you know, solid on on a DK standpoint, and they don't price him up at all. No, I mean, he's just he's nice and cheap, and like you said, I mean, he's getting a ton of targets. I don't really think he's going to lose much um, if Macklin comes back. I'm not sure that he will anyway. His status never seems to never seem to get like an official word on his status anyway. But you know, he had ten catches in a game two three weeks ago, nine catches last week. We kind of mentioned how he did it all. Um, and even before you know, while Macklin was around, I mean, he had touchdowns in back to back games at one point. Had that game where he struggled against Jacksonville, but we know they're also a pretty good team against the pass. So at fifty eight hundred dollars, or I'm sorry, forty six hundred on DraftKings. I mean, it just makes a lot of sense to go ahead and lock him in your cash game, especially if you're pairing him with the top guy. And even if you're not, I mean, you could lock, you could lock in, you know, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, a bunch of top guys with him. Because, I mean, $1,600 above minimum for a guy that could see 10 targets, that seems like an easy play in cash for me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, GPP wideouts here, Jamison Crowder, 5,800. Should be a really sneaky call this week because, obviously, you know, it, this is one of the better secondaries in the league, but this is really, you know, where you can kind of attack them. And we saw that last week with Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, we saw, like you said, Taylor Gabriel last week had a monster game, um, kind of as the smaller slot receiver there. Um, you mentioned earlier, we we're talking about how Tyron Matthew might end up missing this game. I think he's questionable right now. Um, but either way, you know, you're going to see a guy like Jameson Crowder get even more involved this week, especially with Jordan Reed. They haven't even listed him as doubtful yet, which I think is pretty ridiculous. It doesn't seem like he's going to play. Um, but either way, sits out. I mean, Crowder's already a guy who's been seeing a ton of targets. Um, only saw three against Green Bay um, two weeks ago, but had 102 yards and a touchdown with that one big long touchdown catch. Um, Ten targets last week, had six against Minnesota, scored a touchdown then, scored a touchdown against the Bengals, had over 100 yards, over 100 yards against Detroit. I mean, against Detroit. I mean he's quietly been one of the most consistent receivers in the league over the past month or so. Um, I think it's, what, seven straight games where he's had at least um, 12 fantasy points on DraftKings, and he scored in four of six. So, I mean, $5,800 in, I won't say perceived tough matchup. It is a tough matchup, but it's a lot tougher matchup on the outside than it is on the inside. And, you know, with 
the biggest, best target. I'm probably going to miss this game for Kirk Cousins. Someone's got to pick up the slack, and I'm not expecting Vernon Davis to step in and get 12-plus targets. I think it's going to be a bunch of targets for Crowder underneath. Yeah, I do too. And, I mean, you look at good run defense as well. I mean, we see Washington. I mean, obviously they had the big blow up against um, – against Green Bay, but, you know, it's a different case. You're going on the road to Arizona, a bit, a bit different uh, in terms of how they can game plan. Speaking of Packers, though, Jordy Nelson, 7K, um, should be a really sneaky play in a surprisingly good matchup. I mean, uh, you look at these corners for Houston, they've kind of fallen off here over the last five, six, seven weeks. Yeah, you know, and uh, Aaron Rodgers, people I feel like could be down on him a little bit this week because there's news coming out that he's dealing with a hamstring injury, of course, and – See an article saying Brett Hundley is ready to go if he doesn't play. I mean, especially with them battling for a playoff spot, they've lost four the last five games. Aaron Rodgers is not sitting this game out unless he can't walk. There's no way that Aaron Rodgers is not going to play in this game, right? No, he's he's playing. I mean, zero percent chance, right? Like, if the guy has one leg, he's going to go out there and limp on that one leg and throw the ball to Jordy Nelson. Like, I just feel like he's going to have way lower ownership than he should, which obviously means Nelson will. And you know. That Washington game, he saw just five targets, but still scored a touchdown. Aside from that, 12, 18, and 13 targets and nine over the past four weeks. Scored a touchdown in all but one of those. In the game he didn't score in, still eight for 91. So he's a guy with floor. He's got big-time upside. And 12 for 126 against Tennessee a couple weeks ago, um, 7 for 94 and a touchdown. Then before that, 4 for 94 and a touchdown. This is a guy who is – I mean, he's he is the best red zone threat in the NFL. He's got the most looks inside the 20 tie for the most inside the 10 and he's seen 10 looks inside the 10 yard line this year um caught seven of them and six for touchdowns so i mean if they get down in the red zone especially inside the 10 the ball is going to jordy nelson and you know that hamstring or not it, it's not going to be difficult for jordy or for aaron Rodgers to take three steps back and just throw the ball to jordy nelson i mean he's done it hundreds of times and it's not going to change if he's a little less mobile this week yeah no, in fact, I definitely. it might help him if he can't scramble that's true. Yeah. Give him a limp leg and we'll just see him air it out to Jordy Nelson all day long. Yeah. Three step drop, throw it towards Nelson. I mean, Nelson's got some of the best hands in the league. I think he's he's got big upside for a guy that nobody's really gonna be on, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh value wide outs here, Marquise Wilson. Obviously Chicago basically an all value team at this standpoint, missing Elshon Jeffrey. Uh we saw Wel- Wilson come and just be, you know, involved right away. Yeah, I mean this is a guy who had a couple of big games last week. Um, was on a million, at least one millionaire maker team. I know with a Drew Dinkmeyer won a million dollars with him on his team yeah. last year. So, I mean, the, the guy's not, it's not a complete fluke that he just came in and had a good game last week. Obviously, I think they were down, what was it, 24 to three at one point. So they were passing on just about every down. But, I mean, the guy's $1,000 above minimum. Um, Matt Barkley, we mentioned, he looked good. I mean, I'm not saying he's a good quarterback. Obviously, he's not, or he would have already been a starter somewhere at least better than third string. But, you know, it's it's his team now until he gets hurt like the other guys, like Hoyer and Cutler did, which could rest certainly have a with Hoyer. that offensive line. Yeah, rest in peace, Brian Hoyer. We'll see, we'll see him <laughs> next year or in the Hall of Fame, one of the two. But, uh, I mean, Wilson saw 11 targets last week. He probably won't see 11 again this week. Um, hopefully they won't need to throw the ball as much because I'll be playing Jordan Howard all over against this defense. But we mentioned it every week. I mean – Nothing's changed since last week. This is still the worst defensive unit in football, and I don't even think it's that close. So, Wilson, Howard, I mean, get yourself some cheap pieces of this and uh, just expect the Bears to put up a big total. I mean, for as bad as this team has been and a bunch of nobodies and all the injuries they have, they still have a team total of almost 22 points in this one, which seems low. But, I mean, the Rams' team total is like 15 this week. So, just just yeah, compare that. that compare to <laughs> yeah. Taylor Gray, Gabriel, your next 4K uh, on the or, uh, sorry at home against the Chiefs. Uh, pretty good team total here, and I mean this guy, as we've seen over the last few weeks, big time playmaker. Yeah, I mean we've seen him. I didn't even really realize, I'll be honest, that he had had four straight games with almost 15 fantasy points. I mean 15, 8, 18, 6, 14, 6, 26, 2, and he's the thing is he's not a big volume guy but he's been getting looks in the red zone. He's been getting looks down the field. He's had a couple carries, um, had a rushing touchdown a couple weeks ago. Um, But his receiving total is 68, 52, 76, 75, um, four touchdowns or five total touchdowns in the last four weeks. I mean, I think you'd be crazy not to consider him for your cash games and Andrew GPPs as even just a filler at $4,000. I mean, obviously 
pretty tough matchup. Chiefs have been a good defense this week, this year, but they're not going to be game playing to try to stop Taylor, Taylor Gabriel. They're going to be game playing to try to stop Julio Jones and then Devonta Freeman and Matt Ryan. And then you worry about the kind of the gadget type slot receiver and Gabriel. So, I mean, I, I, he certainly won't fly under the radar. He's not going to be a super low own play, but at 4k, I mean, you got to get him into your most of your uh, DraftKings lineups, I think. Yeah, I think so. A cheap price tag, and especially on a week where, you know, there are enticing pay-up options, you're going to want that value. Yep. So, uh, let's wrap things up with the DraftKings wide receiver analysis for week 13. Uh, if you want to check out Justin's article, you can head on over to dailyfantasycafe.com. It's up on the site. Uh, be sure to check out the rest of our week 13 content.